Uh, this is November 25th, 2020, and it's Loose Screws. Uh, I'm Commander J Antrax, and welcome to Loose Screws, the loosest and screwiest podcast about Elite Dangerous uh, in the entire Soul System, and... This might be the loosest and screwiest episode we've ever done. So um, loosen your belts and screw in your turkeys because we're recording a day early <laughs> because of Thanksgiving and everybody wanted the day off for actual Thanksgiving, a uh, very reasonable request. So we're recording on a Wednesday and we're not going to do things like normal. I have no notes. Um, I'm going to lose track of even more stuff than I did last week. And to help me lose track of all that stuff, I have a whole crowd here. First up, Commander Chig. Hello. Hi, I'm not sure what you said you wanted me to do to my turkey, but I'm going to avoid that entirely. <laughs> and evening, everybody. It's uh, Thanksgiving Eve, thanks evening, Eve thanksing. I don't know what we'll go with, but it's the night before Thanksgiving, and that's why we're recording tonight. And that's why we're going to be extra screwy because, yeah, all we do tonight is everybody gets this extra yeah. random day off, so some of us have started drinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, also here, uh, Commander Dubs. Welcome back. Yo, what up? <laughs> he didn't say anything. Yeah. Sweet oh, Cheeks. Did I not? Sorry. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I forgot. On. I was supposed to address you as Sweet Cheeks tonight, and I totally yeah. forgot. I'm that's sorry. Right. Sweet he cheeks. said he What's would up? never answer yeah. to anything. Yeah, I'm not going to answer that. to any. Yeah, that, that's it. If you don't address me by that, I'm not answering. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome, Sweet Cheeks. Uh, also here, uh, Nurgle. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is going to be loose and screwy tonight. Very loose and very screwy. Alcohol sure may is. be involved. <laughs> uh, we're pretty sure. We're pretty sure at this point. And Commander, Lieutenant Commander Data, welcome back. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs> that was Great. so enthusiastic. <laughs> That's awesome. So here's the thing, guys. When you introduce, when when you go around with the say highs, that's so that people who can't see your face or don't maybe aren't intimately familiar with their, your voice can know your voice and identify you for the rest of the conversation. So, um, but gobble gobble will do. <laughs> that's going to be Hi. great. It's going to be just perfect. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, I, you know, like I said, we're we're going free form this time. Um, should we do a little? How's it? How's everybody been been doing? Let's let's do it. Let's go around. We'll do a quick little. Uh, what's what's happened this past week? Chig, what's up? Uh, let's start with Data because he just gave us a oh. gobble gobble. So make him talk more. Okay, hey, Data, what you been doing don't, this week? Don't let him do that. He just doesn't have an answer prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he's earned it. The rest of you with your. Changing your names at the last minute, not even speaking English. I don't even know what to do with you. Hey, wait a minute. Dubs didn't change his name. I gave him that name. That is that is Sir Sweet Cheeks. <laughs> Sir Sweet Cheeks. I Sir Sweet him. Cheeks. He's been knighted on top of it. <laughs> okay, does anybody want to tell me what they've been doing this week? Sure. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll go. We'll Nurgle, get data what's up? to think about his answer. Something happened today that has not happened in a long time. My wife and I had one of those meetings in the kitchen where we said, well, I guess oh, we're wait, ordering wait, a pizza. Wait, wait, wait. Is this, an, is this a, uh, I'm going to have to put an explicit tag on this podcast now? <laughs> no, no. It was one of those times we both looked at each other and said, well, I guess now we're ordering a pizza. So, oh, did you break your kitchen? What did you drop or burn? Uh, no, no, but, but uh, smoke detectors were involved. Oh, dear. So, someone gave my wife one of those little, you know, all-in-one bundle baking things where they put all the ingredients in a pan and they wrap oh, it all yeah. up and say, you know, go and bake something. And she loves to bake anyway, so she's going to make this cranberry nut bread, which frankly sounds delicious, mm -hmm. and mixes it all up, up, puts it in the oven, and somebody who put that little kit together measured wrong because about 15 minutes into cooking, it boiled right over out of the top of the pan, <laughs> splashed all over the bottom of the oven, and started turning into charcoal. I think that oh half God. a cup of gunpowder should have been your <laughs> clue. <laughs> So we, uh, <laughs> you know, we spent about an hour with the windows open and fans going, trying to blow all the smoke out of the house. I still have to turn the, the smoke alarms back on, and that was a well. I guess we're getting pizza moment. Wow, wow. Well, that's 
That's not great. I was about to say that sounds fun. Nope. 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 nope not fun. <laughs> was the pizza good? Uh, it was pizza. Well, where'd you order from? A local place or one of the you chains? Know, pizza. Pizza is one of those things that when it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it's still pretty good. Still all right. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. Truth. And no local uh, local chain or local not chain. Local, local not chain. Gotcha. Yeah. Local place surviving in the world of elite or and world of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong plague, sorry. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Joe's Pizza. Good stuff. All right, Joe's Pizza. All right, who 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 else had who else lived last week? All right, all right. I know our viewers have been clamoring for a laundry room renovation update. Oh yes, of course. I can yes. I can confirm it is complete. Back All right. In action. Dun, dun, dun. Can, Our clothes are clean again. I can change my underwear finally. <laughs> you wear underwear? What? Wow. <laughs> Just on recording days. Okay. So much more than I needed to know. <laughs> and the turkey is thawing in the fridge. Is a euphemism for okay. what? <laughs> Get ready for that. We are going to try deep frying this year for the Ooh. first time. Awesome. Yeah, make sure yeah. it's fully thawed. Yes. Yes. No frozen turkeys. Can't put the fryer in the kitchen. Get that thing outside. Yes. Yep. Looking forward to it. That's awesome. All right. Go for um, it. Who wants to go next? Chigs or Captain Sweet Cheeks or whatever it was? <laughs> I'll let Chig have it. <laughs> <laughs> I love when Sweet Cheeks tells me he's going to let me have it. <laughs> 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 um, good God. Um, well, renovation update. Uh, in the last week, uh, finished finally taping, mudding, and all that. Got the room painted. Got the room uh, sanded. Well, I got the room painted. Got the floor done. Got all of the, tr- well, 90% of the trim done. A few little things left. Have the sink and everything installed, and I would have tied in the plumbing tonight, but I decided, you know, the night before Thanksgiving, risking me screwing something up and my wife not having mm-hmm. water when she's trying mm-hmm. to cook, yeah. you know, a big yeah. meal, I decided I will do that Friday instead. So the bathroom vanity's in and the faucet's in and stuff, but it's not run down into the drain and the plumbing isn't hooked up. I just, I, why you take chances, busy. right? Yeah. Um, mm. So yeah, we're we're really close to done done which is really nice because it was a really really ghetto bathroom now it's like this really really nice bathroom my wife is threatening to move in to that um (laughs) outside of that um tomorrow i get an actual full day off like you know you guys all know i've been working like every day um Tomorrow, I'm, I've got a full day off. I'm not going to think about work. I'm not going to do anything. So I'm going to kick back, have a bunch of beers, and enjoy life tonight. And hopefully we talk about Elite at some point. But I think uh, that, that's we'll all that's been going on for yeah. me. So uh, it, it's uh, Sir Sweet Cheeks time. Turn. <laughs> uh, hold on. What was that? I uh, drew a little bit of wife aggro there. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing uh, this <laughs> Okay, okay. We're talking in-game or out of game. And it, yeah. uh, right now, what have you done in your right, life right now, in the last in week? In my life, I have been over at a friend's house almost every day this week doing an engine and transmission swap on a Suburban. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so we're putting a high horsepower engine and a heavier duty transmission into it, which involves new brackets, wiring, uh, new drive shaft, all that nonsense. It's a whole different level of nerddom, but I assume, what year is the Bourbon? It is a shitbox 2003 Suburban. <laughs> We're putting way too uh, much classic. money into. No, no, it's, it's got the 5.3 LS motor in it. Oh, okay. So, okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. No, so, so far, the only thing that's been done is the ported and polished heads, a bigger cam, gapped all the rings, and we're prepping it for a turbo system next. In a Suburban? What? In a wow. Suburban. Why not? I mean, uh, perfectly I, 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 viable I, I, platform. Okay. I, 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 I don't know. I, I'd be afraid of whatever would fall off. But. Oh, it's like <laughs> wheels only fall off in my vehicles. And the truck whose wheels did fall off is still driving. And it will be getting a turbo as well at some point. <laughs> it's a trike now? No, no. It's It's got four wheels. <laughs> oh, you put another wheel on it. Or yeah, did it have five? Wheels. 
Yeah. If, vice grips. <laughs> put the wheel back on. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we slapped the wheel back on and vice grips held the brake fluid in until it got home. And it <laughs> this podcast is getting yeah. extremely American right now. <laughs> yes, it is. One trip to the scrapyard and $90 later in the truck's driving down the road still to this day. <laughs> wow. Our slash nice redneck nice. engineering. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But yeah, that's 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 been my week working on a, a truck. We, we refer to that as emergent engineering. Now, mm-hmm. my, my random question is: Now, is this all done in a garage, or is this in somebody's driveway? We're doing it in his driveway. Okay, yeah. See, up here in Minnesota, you wouldn't be doing that kind of shit in a driveway <laughs> no. right now. You know, we, <laughs> you we have we have snow on the ground. You know, it's about twenty to thirty degrees temperatures outside well, every I mean, day. So he, you he can has. Die. He has a garage. However, you know, a Suburban doesn't entirely fit into the garage with the engine hoist and everything. So we have like a quarter of the truck sticking out and then we're, you know, we're in the garage. You know, we're not outside. It's like I mean, it's it also, still going to work. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna, I would work in the rain either way. I mean, I've rebuilt a transmission in the middle of a fucking mud field. It's things that can be done. That's I'm driving a <laughs> Suburban right now just because... That Chevy, uh, they were geniuses with the the modern Suburbans. When you lay all the seats down, the back area is, I mean, to within millimeters, the perfect size to transport four by eight sheets of plywood and sheetrock and everything else, just like it's a pickup <laughs> truck. And the back hatch can close. You don't have to, like, be tying the hatch down. They've yeah. actually got it. It's it's amazing. It's like they're designed to haul stuff like that. It can't be an accident. They are. Design. It's almost like it's the same size as a truck or something, but they just have a permanently affixed cap. Well, it, it, there, there is that, but honestly, the, the fact that they put so many luxuries into these things, I mean, you're talking, you know, a sixty-five, seventy thousand dollar vehicle right now, and the leather interior, all of the random electronics they have in there to still keep them functional the way that they are impresses me. Because they could have easily put a random, you know indents on the side anything and just one inch on either side you know one extra cup holder and you couldn't do that but they've still still kept them functional as a utility truck so true. that's all i'm saying this episode just of just don't Grease be yeah the people spending seventy thousand for a brand Chevy. new one are not putting plywood in the back of it <laughs> i was yeah that's for people <laughs> like us who buy them yes. at like a thousand dollars I, I don't buy. It's a company vehicle, so I cheat. Yeah. Like I just, I, <laughs> Loose yeah, screws, I mean, the automotive podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, Chevy. Uh, we haven't talked about any other brand of vehicle right now. It's, it's the, oh, my God. No other, the, no like other a rock podcast. <laughs> 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 but enough of that. What's, what's, what's the next on the agenda? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't have an agenda. Oh, what have you been okay. doing, tracks? Cool. What have you been doing, tracks? Oh, this week? Okay. Well, I, I, we did. We actually did some pre Thanksgivings um, because we sort of compartmentalized and did little smaller units of people and stuff. So I've already had two Thanksgivings, but tomorrow uh, we got a duck to roast. So I'll be roasting a duck for the first time, and hopefully that'll be oh. fun. That's just for uh, the uh, Mrs. Tracks and myself. Um, Question. But, I just want to yes. cut you off. Do you stuff the duck? I wasn't planning on it. I've never cooked a duck before. I'm planning on just okay. figuring out. Th- this is how I do almost everything I do. I just kind of figure it out. Just cook it um, like a turkey I think, and hope for the best. <laughs> I think I think you gain a lot of life knowledge and, and sort of like that that sort of like common sense wisdom and and able to handle thingsness from simply trying to solve your own problems in the moment and just being free about that kind of thing. And at, at the end of it, hopefully we'll have delicious duck to eat. So that'll be fun. Mm. Um, there's always Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Minnesota. <laughs> right. Well, uh, there, I did do some things in game this week. We had a cup. We we successfully, I should say, pretty pretty successfully, uh, ran a couple of these uh, combat tutorial nights that I was talking about doing. It got a ton of interest, and there were lots of people there on both nights. I had help from um, any and all of you at some point. Um, kind of backing me up and looking things up for me and checking my numbers on some stuff, but everybody seemed to really enjoy it. The feedback was humongous. And as awkward as I kind of felt 
uh, at the time, sometimes just sort of monologuing my combat for a while. Everybody keeps giving me great feedback about it. So apparently it was um, a worthwhile endeavor. And there's been um, some feedback about where it can be rewatched. And the thing is, like, I could have, but I did not stream to Twitch and YouTube, so it is not available for replay. Um, I did that very intentionally because I knew I did not prepare like a lesson plan or anything. And I knew I would be sort of searching for things and forgetting things and saying stuff out of order. And it would be very embarrassing for that replay to exist on the internet. Um, but I guess now I'm, I'm needing to create a way to create something like that. So just so you know, all of you on the show right now, I'm planning on enlisting some of your help maybe at some point, but um, I think so. I'm I'm starting to plan out how I might create something like that, and um, we well, I was offered some video editing help too. So maybe yeah, we'll be was, able to put something together that's worthwhile. It was definitely uh, it. It was good. The first night I was in there at the beginning, and it was kind of awkward at the beginning because not knowing how but to you get saved started. I, I yeah, I did. I I just kind of <laughs> jumped in and just kind of started forcing people to tell us their combat experience and stuff just to kind of yeah. get things rolling. And then, right. I, then I felt bad because I kind of bailed out a little bit early. I just family stuff going on. And then the second mm-hmm. night, I came in late, so I was very quiet because I didn't want to also just jump in and just start talking over you. But <laughs> you were you were doing a, a heck of a job and data pulling up Coriolis, and so you were streaming the actual combat and 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 stuff in game, and then data helping you out with showing Coriolis and how these things pieced together and it, it it was it was going really well i i was i was impressed with with the way that it went and the amount of participation and just people showing right. up so i think yeah definitely streaming it again and and the second night you know i, I think that the second night what i was noticing is just uh, becoming more concise with some of the little lesson things and then reaching out for mm. questions right away and and going that way the first night it was kind of you know seeing how it went and then learning how it goes so i think the next time it'll go even better sure and uh, yeah i mean that's true we could just do another live one and record it that that would be one kind of easy way to do it i was sort of thinking that maybe it would be something that isn't live but then gets that that way we can sort of cut it and put it together um, but maybe live would be a, a good way to sort of start and cut it down from there. Um, cause I can, we can just do that. YouTube would just capture everything and then we can download from there and a report yeah, and repost like an edited version. You did get an offer for help to edit, edit from our yes. good friend, professor, the prof- professor Awan. <laughs> yes. Mentioned that he would, he would lend some assistance and, and stuff. So I, 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 That's good because otherwise it's iMovie, everybody. Exactly, but <laughs> but no, I, I mean, and, and I'm sure some of us in here have some video editing experience too. So we yeah. could we could put something together, but that requires us putting together some kind of script and lesson plan, and and it, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It just starts to sound like it'd be a lot of work. That we're, we're a lazy one. I, I I think a matter just just kind of setting up notes and stuff beforehand. Now that I've kind of gone through it a couple of times, um, I think it would be easy to set up notes, uh, and that would be a fine okay. way to do it. So, yeah, now yeah. that you know where the the friction points are, so to speak, you know where you need to nudge and where to ask questions. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, well, so th- yeah, that that's what's been going on. Well, I, you know, the other thing that I did was I prepared the ship that I intend to take out for the Distant Screws 2 expedition, and that got me thinking. Um, have we have we talked very much about the Distant Screws expedition on the podcast yet? The Distant Screws 2, I should say, uh, coming up here in January. I, I don't, don't remember know if, if we, I, I don't think we, I think we just it mentioned it. Lot. Yeah. Something on yeah. Discord. Yeah, we kind of mentioned it quickly. Um, I think we probably mentioned it before the the proper announcement was up, um, and then the announcement did go up. Uh, I'm gonna look right now in in pin messages and see if we have the newest one. Um, it would be in the regular events channel. Yeah. Um, the gosh, where is it? 
Yes. Okay. So it is in the pinned in the pinned uh, mess- uh, messages on on our events channel in Discord. Uh, Distance screws two is up, and uh, there's a link here to uh, Commander Jello Wiggler's forum post explaining um, kind of what it's all about and what you know what the itinerary is. The EDSM page is up for it. It's set to embark on the eighth of January. Um, we will be traveling to. Evelyn's Light, which is a named neutron star uh, in honor of Junior Commander Wiggler, Evelyn. Uh, and from there, we will set out into the unknown to find things and to go wherever we want to go. It is unplanned at this point. And then the very end, the very last waypoint on the EDSM expedition is um, set like quite a while later. So there, there's nothing in between there. Basically, we set out on Jan 8. Uh, we arrive at Evelyn's Light on February 26th. And then after that, it's go wherever you want and make new discoveries. And back on May 15th uh, in Loose Crew's home territory uh, for the end of the expedition. Um, and I think I think that's very fun and exciting. Uh, there's a lot of people already signed up, but I just happen to think that I, I don't know if we'd really given it a real firm mention on the show yet. Um, everybody's signed up, right? Oh, yeah. Everybody in here? I was, oh, yeah. I was the first one to sign up, just saying. Oh, <laughs> well, aren't yeah. you, aren't you a special. pretty little girl, sweet cheeks? <laughs> 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 um, so I prepped a... I decided I want to take a Cobra Mark III, because I don't want to take the Anaconda uh, out on an expedition again, because it's rather dull ship to bring around. And I thought this classic elite ship. So I, I built an Anaconda. I, I built an Anaconda. I built a Cobra Mark III, um, and it's all assembled and everything. I have a, a laden jump range of just shy of forty-seven light years, and that's with uh, shields and. Um, full complement of guns, <laughs> fairly punishing guns, actually. AFMU, I've got, you know, A-rated uh, thrusters and distributor and a vehicle hanger and repair limpet and everything and squeezed all that into this little ship. So you can do wow. a lot with small ships. Yeah. So stay yeah, strapped just, and all. And I just took my uh, Exploration Phantom that... I love so much, and because of the wonderful mm. new uh, frameshift drive we all got, I decided to get out of the f- you know smaller thrusters and go with the big thrusters on it. And once I put the big thrusters on it, then I decided to make it a combat ship. So I'm going to be <laughs> you know figure out an exploration ship come January. Every ship awesome. should be a combat ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went. I went and put that. Um, that double engineered FSD uh, onto my Phantom. So basically swapped a fully engineered um, uh, long range FSD with mass manager on it, the mass manager special effect, swapped that for the double engineered, which doesn't have a special effect on it currently, and it gained three light years yep. just right there. And nice. so now I'm going to take it out and add mass manager, and I ought to gain another um, five percent or four percent or something out of that. So yeah, yeah it's I was very up to cool. almost unlaid and like like maximum jump range was almost seventy five on it when I wow had it, you know my full exploration build on it. So it's mm-hmm. like holy crap! And then I'm like, well, I you know I like having the big jump range, but I always hated having the smaller thrusters. So yeah. once I did the the that FSD and then put on, you know, 6A uh, dirty drives on it, then I was jumping almost the same as I was before, you know, which was, you know, 65-ish max. So I, I, I'm perfectly happy with that. I, I may go exploring with that jump range, but having the ability to boost almost 600 instead of, you know, 480 or whatever it was before. Right. Oh, that's the other thing about this Cobra too. It it uh, it's extremely fast and boots boosts like six thirty or something like that with with all this load on it. I I'm very impressed. Um, it's sort of cool to fly this old classic kind of thing. 
What what um, what are you guys taking? Uh, at Dubs, I can't call you by your you name. Mean, you mean you mean what are you com- bringing? C- Sir Commander Sweet Commander Queen Sweet Cheeks or Sir whatever it is. Queen, it's Queen now. Ooh, yes, yeah, now you is. guys are just adding things Prince, to Princess it. Princess right. Sweet Cheeks. I didn't, I didn't agree to this much, but I'll, I'll <laughs> Princess Butter Cheeks. Uh, so I'm probably, I'm probably still just going to take the same anaconda I took last time. Gross. But I'm debating Boo. using the Diamondback. I don't know. The Diamondback Explorer is nice. I threw my uh, double-engineered FSD onto it, and I got 65 light-year jump range fully kitted out, you know, with hull reinforcement yep. and full weapons and everything. <laughs> hull reinforcement. <laughs> I mean, it's only a single. It's a size 2 hull reinforcement, G5, you know, all but the way. But it's there. <laughs> it's, it's probably one of the stronger Diamondback Explorers that has a 60 light-year jump range. My God. What about you, Data? I'm probably going to take the the boring choice. And I've reworked the Anaconda. I took on Distant Screws One, the original <laughs> screwing. Yeah, there's nothing wrong I just with have that. To ask up, up, how, do you guys, how do you guys deal with the super cruise turning on an on an expedition that far? Doesn't that get <sighs> annoying as fuck? I mean, I fly in a straight line most of the time in super cruise, so it's really not a big deal. <laughs> and in normal space. A G5 dirty drag drive 60 thruster on an anaconda is not that bad, actually. It might be like 20 or 30 meters per second slower, but it's really still a quick ship in normal space. And as far as supercruise goes, it, whatever. I, I turn slow, turn on supercruise assist, and then I kick back and wait. Yeah, but see, that's where the turning around slow comes in, is where I'm spacing out or something, and I, I you know, I'm full throttle to get to, because. My OCD is just terrible. You know, I I, I see <laughs> I, I see a water world three hundred light seconds away. I three hundred thousand light seconds away. I need to go to it, and I can't do that just in Super Cruise Assist. So I've got throttle full bore, and I go grab a drink, go do this, come back, sit down, and then I shoot past the planet, and then I got to turn around and come back. And it's just tedious. Sounds like it, a personal it's limitation fine. to me. Yeah. It doesn't bother me none. <laughs> you guys suck. All right, Nerd, what about you? <laughs> oh, it's the boring choice. My my long range exploration asp explorer. That's not a boring choice. Yeah. That can turn good in Super Cruise. That's right. Yes. Command you, I, sir. All right. All right. Yes, call the amazing on super One more time, Jig, and I will gank you at Evelyn's Light. <laughs> oh, it's on. Interdictor. Oh, it's on. I'm bringing weapons now. <laughs> You gotta, I, you gotta hunt the new combat ready uh, uh, phantom, huh? Yeah, my, yeah, my new combat, see. my new combat ready phantom that's gonna have like a thirty light year jump because I'm gonna have like every hull <laughs> reinforcement <laughs> out of the planet and meta I weapons. I think you're overestimating his ability to chase you down. I, in the I definitely am. I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm dead. If, if you a, can beat my anaconda, no, I mean in he won't fight. be able to catch you. Yeah, uh, if he runs away, he doesn't win. If you can beat my exploration <laughs> anaconda in a fight with your exploration crate, which the minimum jump range will be sixty light years, then I will sell the anaconda and buy a crate and kit it out. Do you not right. have a crate Ever- phantom, Dubs? I have never owned a crate phantom. Everybody's hearing this now. Oh. We we got a friendly bet going now. I, I'm going to have my. My crate will be combat ready with a minimum 60 light year jump range, and I'm going to fight dubs to the death at Evelyn's Light. Sorry, Jello, we don't mean to be disrespectful. But we'll, no. we'll do it at Colonia. That way we're not doing it there at the event. That's a better choice. Okay. I, and, and there'll be, yeah, there'll be stations nearby and stuff too, so it's not like you'll be. No, we yeah. can't go to a single station before we leave. <laughs> I mean, I was going to take my. Carrier the carriers are going to come way. out with us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, loser yeah. flies all the way back. Yeah, it's going to be Sorry, this weird carrier parade. It's going to be this is going to be a weird expedition. I've, yeah, I've thought about and looked a little bit into taking like a medium or a classic ship like the Cobra, mm-hmm. getting it for exploration. I just can't give up my optional internals that I get that's, with the Anaconda. That's my well, what, I, what are you wanting it. to bring? Because I've got I've got repairs I've got AFMU I've got SRV. Yeah, that's what so I was got, wondering. My last trip, I didn't feel like I was missing anything, and I really felt like I almost brought too much, even in a Phantom. Yeah, maybe maybe I wouldn't miss it. I think I've got also some more Olympic controllers in there. I think I've got a repair, a fuel transfer, 
Olympics, sure, all sure. That. Things come to mind. I'm, but no, with I'm carriers, a one-man rescue like... ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with carriers, it changes things. It does. It does. It does change things. Well, interesting uh, update right now. Just I, I just thought I'd throw this out there. Yeah. I now have an Xbox account for Elite Dangerous also. My daughter Ooh. just bought one. It came to nine dollars and seventy eight cents. That's interesting. Ooh. So I don't know if that's some kind of sale or what's going on, but for under ten dollars I now have an Xbox account. That's six pounds, dollars. I have a six second pounds account. and fifty pence. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I've always I've always half considered getting a console account just so I can see both sides of the story. Like hate, you know, started on Xbox and came to PC. Now I can go sit my ass on the couch and play some Elite Dangerous. I'm looking forward don't, to giving that a go. Don't some of the FDev community managers play on console as well? Those guys, I know, right? In in their leisure time. Yeah. Um okay, well um let's Let's squeeze in a little bit more of uh, elite talk. I'll tell you what. Let's let's go ahead and talk about what's going on with the faction right now before we get into kind of the main thing here. What do you say? Sure. Incoming priority message. Squadron briefing. So, uh, yeah, busy week. In the faction, um, at the moment, there are eight conflicts, either elections or wars, going on, three of which Lou Screws is directly involved in, five of which we have some interest in who wins, uh, either for BGS purposes or to direct expansions or anything like that. So there's eight different conflicts going on out there right now. Six of them are wars, so if you want to get the boom-booms on somewhere, um, there's plenty of places for that to happen. Um, we are in the final countdown for our latest expansion. It should go off. You know, There's a little bit of randomness in how long it takes. It should be anywhere between Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week. Um, still got some work to do for where we want to direct that. We've got some orders up for some factions we need to shuffle to make sure we go where we want to go. And, uh, yeah, it's been a busy week. Busy, busy week. Nifty. Um, that's Nifty. not what I expected to come out of my mouth when I, when I unmuted my mic. Um, I, I was as surprised as the rest of you. Just understand that. Uh, yeah, I... It, that's true. Busy week. Um, there's there's lots of things going on. Uh, we don't need to dwell on the squad stuff. It's available in squad chat. Uh, we all know what we really want to get to today, and that's the Galnet news. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so, so the, mining mergers and acquisitions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so there's been some Galnet stuff. The, the, here's the thing. Um, last week we talked a lot about the balance changes that are coming. And somehow in all of my notes, I managed to completely overlook the extremely important detail that uh, the devs promised that all of these balance changes would come through narrative. They would be associated with Galnet articles and they would be in-universe changes, um, which I don't know how I missed that because that was like an extremely important thing. And I expected to be totally flogged by the listener base. And really, I wasn't. Um, and so I'm going to just, I'm going to berate myself a little bit. You did a bad, bad job. You did a bad job. Shame. Yeah, exactly. Um, especially because it really changed, it, it should have changed what my predictions were for how this was going to go down because I was completely wrong. Because how in the world would they narratively say that lasers aren't as effective now and, you know, uh, uh, subsurface missiles and stuff, you know, develop more chunks? But anyway, so <laughs> the, the, the mining stuff, the mining changes have come and they've come in the form of a Galnet article saying that the commodity prices are crazy and wild and, and um, then kind of behind the scenes, essentially, the... the the long and short of it is we're promised that uh, Paynite will have like a max sell price of around 600,000 credits. 
and uh, there's a small uh, dip to uh, the max sell price of void opals, and LTDs change a little bit too. And then with the subtext that a lot of other minerals will probably be raised. And so essentially we have this market, and I pull up the EDDB commodities page, that everything's kind of switching places. Um, LTDs haven't changed that much. Void opals are way down today. Painite is insanely down. And then things like alexandrite is way up. And uh, grand diderite, however you say that, is that's that's gone up sometimes. So it's it's high right now. But then monazite, r- f- oh God, how do I even say that one? Anyway, s- several others. Muscovite currently at the top. Uh, selling for uh, 1.074 uh, million at the highest uh, sale price. So, uh, you know, with with everyone, everyone is freaking out about. Oh man, got to mine pay night quick. Everything's going to happen. Um, I have been sort of keeping one eye on the mining channel in our Discord, and it doesn't seem like everybody stopped mining. Uh, still viable, right? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. The minerals it, are spreading out, but isn't that good? Well, one, laser mining and for painite is still going to be viable only because um, it's a more consistent return over time um, okay. because you don't have to go hunting down cores. So you're going to be more consistently getting smaller quantities in and you'll probably accumulate more over time. And because uh, platinum and osmium Osmium, O S I U M, Osium, however we pronounce Osmium. that. Osmium. Osmium. Be- because both of those are now in the 300 range and are found in the same locations as Painite, it's actually viable to take some things off your ignore list, um, hmm. which means even more of the asteroids you run across have a mineable material in them. And I'd say okay. right now it's still evolving, isn't it? We're, we're still Very much. Waiting, oh, sh- to see, waiting to see where the chips fall to know what you should be doing and not. Because, I mean, the forums, people are losing their freaking minds because something that was this price is no longer this price. And they never saw the Gelnet article. And now they're all confused. And nice. it's, it, it's, it's a turbulent time. And I, I'd be hesitant to do any mining right now. I, I just want to wait and see where it goes. And unfortunately, the people that live by mining, uh, you know, they're the ones in the churn right now. They just have to ride it out and see what happens. Right. And one of the speculations that's going on right now, and, and I don't know how anybody would ever test this to prove it, is that part of the change They made to demand. Hmm. So, if a lot of uh, and okay. I get sold everywhere, we would test huh. that. So you'll end up with like across the whole galaxy. If everybody gets onto Paynight for a second, something else will leap up to replace right. it. And right. And yeah, but well, I mean, you're talking about Paynight, uh, Platinum, Osmium. Those three are in the 300. Osmium's down at 269,000 right now, but like. Up from that, I mean, everything up from that is worth at least double. And, and everything them, up from that is four. Triple. Well, they're not all. Alexandrite, it can be found out. Well, Serendibite, Alexandrite. Yeah, I guess those are cores. Is Monazite a core? I don't know. I thought some of these weren't cores. What it's going to do is that it's going to even further favor carrier owners. Because if you have a fleet carrier, you can oh, just stash all that stuff and wait for the market well, volatility if, to swing in your favor. If it's and if it, it is wild, that might be good for as far as from the perspective of like everybody's in the one system doing the one thing, right? Oh yes. Right. I'm a fan of the fact that it does allow for that variety though and the higher skilled player is going to make more uh, the rich get richer but you know that the people that really know how to play the system and you're watching it you're monitoring it instead of you know three or four things is all that anybody does now it queen really sugar spreads bridges. it out and I, I i i like that what do you think dubs 
Well, sweet cheeks, sugar britches. That's even better. I like that. <laughs> I'd say it, it benefited me pretty well because I just kind of when I go mining I just hoard everything on my fleet carrier anyways. All, I never all really 6, go and sell it immediately. It. So when I heard about all this nonsense, I went ahead and just sold all the uh, the painite I had on the carrier, which I actually had mined none of personally. I just set all my. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how much there was. There was like there wasn't six thousand. It was like maybe eight hundred tons. But I haven't actually gone mining myself in a long time. I just set my buy prices to like three hundred thousand below the max market value, and people just yeah. sold their stuff to me. And I just went and offloaded nice it all. I what about your data? Profited, what do you think? Like five hundred thousand, five hundred million actual credits. Yeah, but I also uh, didn't put in any work. Become. I just sold it. More complex of a market than I thought it was going to be, based so, on how the. How it was talked about on the FDev live stream and the the forum post. Have you benefited yeah. or or been frustrated by it? I haven't been. No, neither. I would say I haven't tried to go mining since I've sort of had the same mindset as you. <laughs> Just sort of yeah. wait and see what happens. Yeah, and you're in the boat with me. You have credit, so you don't have to worry uh, about it too much. You just kind of wait and see what happens. Yeah, I've always waited. Speaking of benefiting yeah, from this crazy. whole mining, just concept, yeah, just shy for that. So uh, I was I was in the the high sell system, which was like what a million credits a ton for the pay night, and uh, yeah, I was. I think where I dropped my carrier, because the, the actual planet that the cell station was at was completely full. You couldn't move a carrier there. And it was around like the secondary star, which is like 300,000 light seconds from the drop in yeah. point. And so I just had my carrier there. Carrier there, I forgot that I had a buy order in for like 500,000 credits a ton. So it was like half the price of what the, car- the station was buying it for. And to make the, to make the story short, someone was so lazy that they didn't want to drive the fourteen what was it fourteen thousand light seconds to drop, go to the actual cell station, so they were just offloading it at my carrier for half price, and then I just <laughs> picked it back up and carried it over to the station and made double my profits for nothing. <laughs> wow! You know what they say: there's a sucker born every minute. I so, so I I yeah three hundred tons of painite. Somebody put it there for. Half the price of what the the station in the same system was buying it for, so that's awesome. Yeah, that didn't didn't mean to interrupt you there, Data. I just got excited and jumped on it. If you no. have something to say, no, <laughs> he tends uh, to no, get excited I've... and jump on things. All right, <laughs> wow, jump on, <laughs> jump on so he's got anytime. two kids. I think. Right. I mean. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, very well. You're, so we're done. We're done with mining. The only other thing that's going on in Galnet is this business about Core Dynamic, uh, Core Dynamics bid to purchase Lacon Spaceways. Um, so far, I, we haven't seen anything emerge in game yet. So we're all just speculating. But um, everybody seems to be. Everybody in Discord chat seems to feel like this has something to do with possible new ships or possible new SRVs. Uh, thoughts, feelings, emotions, and wishes, everyone. I hope so. Uh, I mean, my personal thoughts about it, I don't know. Not a not a huge fan. <laughs> That's that a another... great thought. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a huge fan that an independent ship manufacturer is being gobbled up by a superpower aligned. Uh, you know, it's just right. just one more yeah one more independent business being eaten up by a giant government. But you know, it's all cool. Amazon just bought Bill's widgets. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> if they want to okay. add new ships, it, they can add new yeah. ships. I'm yeah, saying. Well, it there remains, goes the remains to be seen. Line. Yeah. I'm a complete um, mercenary. If I get new ships out of it, I'm good. I feel the same way as that. So, uh, so let's see. Uh, the the so the thing we are really going to do with this episode of the show it's Thanksgiving here in the states. So we thought. Let's um, let's do listener questions, uh, and Nurgle put out the call for listener questions, and we got some. So 
<laughs> actually, we got one for. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read them. I'm gonna throw them to you guys, and it's gonna be great. This is gonna be outstanding or terrible. We'll see. Um, <laughs> they were great. First questions. question, maybe terrible first question, responses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first question so- comes from somebody called Near Gal, I guess, um, whoever that is. Explain the weapon hull size damage penalty and how I should account for this in ship design. So tell me, did this did this come from doing when we were doing combat tutorial night? Uh actually you explained that really well on the second night. And I had entered that question in ah. before the second night because I know that is something that I have heard asked frequently. And while I might understand it, I know there's a lot of people in the squadron who are listening who don't even know it exists. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Um, okay. Well, so this is this isn't like an opinion thing. So I guess I'll just answer it. the The weapon damage penalty against hull um, is to do with the size of the hard point versus the size of the ship you're firing on. So small hard points suffer a penalty against medium and large ships, so they do 100% of their damage to small ship hulls, but only 66% to medium ship hulls and only 33% to large ship hulls. And likewise for the size 2 hard points, they do full damage to small and medium ships, but suffer a 33% damage penalty to large ships. And then, of course, the size 3 and size 4 hard points have no penalty. Uh, the word is that this does not happen for railguns. Um, and I think people say it doesn't happen for cannons, but that would disagree with um, the presumption or or guess that, that Dubs and I both had that it has to do with armor piercing. Uh, the cannon has the size two cannon has a fifty for armor piercing. I think all the rail guns end up having a hundred, uh, which yeah. made us think that it was um, to do with the armor piercing value. So I think there is there is a hidden metric there um, that is like reducing the effectiveness of smaller weapons against larger hulls. But how do you account for this in ship design? Is that's why I recommend people put their kinetic damage on the largest hard points on their ship and save the thermal damage like lasers for the smaller hard points because those are shooting primarily at the shields of enemy ships where there is no damage penalty for being a small hard point. So you can be more effective. Plus, that will free up energy on your ship because the kinetic weapons tend to be less energy intensive and less heat producing most of the time. Um, So you can get away with fewer pips to weapons in your distributor and be faster, be tougher with your shields. All of these things come into account. So that's a good way to optimize ship builds. Any other comments? You must have practiced that because that's almost exactly the way you explained it Tuesday night. (laughs) I must have read it a couple of times, yeah. You must have read it a couple of times, yes. (laughs) Um, Okay. Let's see. So another question. Um, Which thermal vent beams are more effective in realistic combat usage? Overpowered or higher heat... Sorry, overpowered for higher heat transfer or efficient for lower heat generation. The ED tutorials video was, quote, laboratory conditions and doesn't seem to match my perceived real world performance. And that's a question from Arcelabor. Arcelabor? Cool name. Yeah, I think I said that right. We'll see. Um, Kick it over. Who wants to jump in? I don't think that efficient beam lasers with thermal vent are all that effective because when I used to run my Corvette with the uh, the two four size four hard points as efficient thermal vents, it seemed like they they had trouble keeping the temperature controlled the way I thought they would. But then when you switch over to something like lightweight beam lasers, like on my Exploration Anaconda, they will take the temperature straight to zero and keep it there the entire time regardless of what everything else is doing. Right, thermal vent has always been, uh, my understanding was, its effect- effectiveness at lowering your heat is based on how much heat the weapon's generating. So if you yes, put like a right. short-range mod on there, it'll lower your heat more when you're hitting a target. But the same with like the lightweight works because it lowers the distributor draw so you can fire longer, but it doesn't change the heat generation so they dissipate more heat. The same with, like, overcharged would make them dissipate more heat at the cost of draining your capacitors faster, but also having a higher damage output. 
And long range, I don't know if it increases the heat, but I do know it doesn't lower the heat, which also makes that a good candidate for the thermal venting. Yes. Right. So if you're loading your ship up on Coriolis, you can look at that HPS, that heat per second value yeah. on your beam laser. So the and I'm, I'm going to go a different route on answering this question. Is He says, you know, it doesn't seem to match my perceived real-world performance. And a lot of that is anecdotal, but there's a lot to say for that. If something feels better for you, there's a psychological benefit to that, even though it might be a little bit better either way. In one, maybe straight up mathematically better, but if you're fly, the way you fly your ship gets you on target better with this or doing something here, you need to go with where it works for you. And that's the beauty right. of this game sometimes. It's not always, there is not always a, this is the right answer because the way you fly has a lot to do with how you can optimize, get the most benefit from some of these. So, you know, there's that too. If you, if you feel that the other way is weaker, get away from it and do with what you feel is doing better. And if you're having more success, go that route. That's just my yeah. take. And, and I, it, always... it depends on the ship build. It does, like you said. Uh, I noticed, like, if if the ship itself is already good at managing its own heat and all you're trying to do is keep the heat generated by the beam lasers themselves at bay, then thermal vent's fine with efficient because it's only dealing with the thermal beams themselves. But if you're running a silent running build and or if you're doing, yes. like, AX combat and the beam laser's job is to cool down the rest of the ship and take off the heat from, like, some Gauss cannons – then you absolutely do not want efficient because it will not take more than what the laser itself produces. So you're going to want something like lightweight on something like an AX build to where the beam laser is pulling more weight than it's you know, putting into the ship's heat. Uh, or if you're like trying to run shield cell banks or something like that. So it's, it's really yeah. up to what the ship build is for and what other weaponry you're planning on running with it. And I personally prefer long range and thermal vent because I always want to be able to vent heat into a target and I don't want to have to get close to him to do it if I don't have to. And see, the opposite, <laughs> yeah. I like to be up close and personal with my target. So I, well, you know, if, which, I've, if I've just finished somebody off and the nearest available target to vent heat in is 5,000 meters away, I don't want to have to run up to him. I just want to be able to pump some heat into him and keep going. Yeah, and another thing to, like, when I mentioned earlier, like, the silent running builds, uh, regardless of how cold your ship is, the person you're striking is still going to register you on their tar their sensors, because being shot at sure. registers, regardless yeah, of yeah. temperature or scan range or anything like that. So that's something to keep track of, too. Now, if you're in a messy wing fight, then, yeah, the silent running with the thermal lightweight lasers is great, because nobody else can target you now. Right, and and it's distracting, right? There's a lot of other targets to be distracted yeah. by. Right. Yeah. So it's it, it really does depend on your specific use case. And just, just right. to back up back up a little bit for any viewers that aren't familiar with engineering yet, thermal vent is an experimental effect. You can apply only to beam lasers. I'm pretty yes. sure. Mm -hmm. you can't. Yeah, it's <clears> only yes. on beams. And it pretty much when you're hitting a target, it acts like a heat sink and drops structure heat down some amount of your ship. Yes. A couple of other... Yeah. At, at the penalty of increased heat generation when you're not shooting a target. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And the, sometimes it's right. missed. So, yeah. Thank when you for bringing that up, Data, because sometimes we just lose sight of the fact that <laughs> some people could be listening. What the fuck are these guys talking about? So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like a couple other experimental effects that do different things but sound the same, like thermal shock or thermal uh, conduit. Cascade. Conduit's another one, yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, thermal vent. Con conduit imparts heat onto the, sh onto the target ship. Um, yeah, so this is an interesting question because... That comes up a lot, and, and I, I agree and disagree with various things that you guys were all saying because it's so personal. Um, and I think that that's a, an insightful thing that's like, this didn't match my real-world performance. Um, I have, I mean, you can look at the math. By the math, lightweight should be the best because it lowers distributor draw while not lowering heat generation. Um, 
therefore your your weapon creates the most heat per energy that it's drawing. And so you can drain the most heat for the longest time. Um, however, it also matters how the weapon is going to work. And um, long range means you can strike targets from a hell of a lot farther away. And um, the damage fall off uh, matters too, um, to, to a certain extent, how effective a weapon is. All that said, I still end up liking it best on efficient. Just the way I fly, like I get on top of them and I, I don't fire the lasers when I'm farther away because I know they're not going to be effective. But when, they, when I am up close, they're, they're very powerful and they don't generate much heat. And um, I still, you know, ice over my cockpit all the time. Um, it doesn't work very well in the Corvette. Uh, and I ended up switching that thing to multi cannons, but um, in other ships, it's it has been really effective. I think so. the real lesson there is optimize your ship for the way you fly, not necessarily what the math says is the best right. thing. Yeah, yeah, and ultimately, like that, I guess. So the the thing you actually need to know in order to make that choice, or in order to inform that choice, is that it. It vents heat from your ship at the rate that the weapon would draw heat normally. That that's the right that's the yeah, right way, right? I, I believe, yeah. yes. And also okay. another thing to remember is heat is not nearly as threatening as you might think it is. Your cockpit might be flashing and warning you, but it's really not that bad. You'll survive. Yeah. A couple of percent damage on your modules. Well, actually that's the other thing is when you, you know, I say by the math, lightweight might be the best, but lightweight lowers the integrity of the beam laser. And if if you are tending to miss your targets a lot, that means you're generating extra heat on your ship, and that lightweight beam laser with lowered integrity is going to break. So yeah, that's that's true. If you're yeah. overheating that bad, I mean, that's what, a lot one of heat. thing when you first start or this or game, you're in combat with a lightweight uh, module, then it's it could be taking damage. Anyway, it, it yeah, could happen. But, but oftentimes new players aren't doing a lot of that stuff, and you need to learn that they, when, when you first start flying and you're like fuel scooping and you're freaking smoking and steaming, <laughs> you start to panic, <laughs> and you're at like 65% heat, it's not a panic situation. It sure right. feels like it, but it, it, it really isn't. You need to learn to embrace a little bit of heat, you know? Pretend you're Norwegian and you're getting a little bit of sauna action because, <laughs> because uh, literally, <clears throat> literally, it, it does... Uh, when I finally learned to just kind of not ignore heat but not panic about it is when I got into Thargoid combat and, you know, Gauss cannons start heating you up so much. And then, you know, you're smoking... 90% of the time and, and you're just, and then you have to, you, you know, you have to get your heat up to what, what do you have to get it up to, to burn off caustic? 240? 300, 200. Oh. 180 is what I get mine yeah. to. And it like, takes a couple seconds. So, so oh, that's, if it's, yeah. if it's the, if it's the, um, caustic. yeah, there, there's a couple yeah. of different levels, right? There's, there's like the scouts or whatever. And yeah, so there's once, a, I think there's a different level for the cloud than there is for but, the missiles. But once you start, like burning you start heating yourself up on purpose to get rid of caustic so you don't take module damage you realize that the <laughs> heat is a smaller problem than other things in the game and you just deal with it and that that's that's a big lesson that a lot of new players need to learn is the little bit of smoke off your dash yes if you keep doing that and doing it and doing it it's going to cause you issues but really, it's just telling you, hey, you're approaching danger zone. You're going to start taking some damage. You know, relax. You know, get away from what you're doing. It's like getting your hand near a flame. Pull your hand away. Don't put your hand all the way in the flame. But, you know, that that's, that's a big <laughs> lesson that took me a long time to learn. Commander Chiglov, how I learned to stop worrying and love the heat. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. Yes. That, that another, might be the one right there. Another t shirt slogan we need. <laughs> as long oh, as he man. doesn't talk about his precious bodily fluids later, we're fine. <laughs> My bodily fluids are precious? What? <laughs> what are we talking about? All right. All right, next question. Uh yeah, so one one more question here from our from the squadron zone commander Diva Luter. 
Uh, if you could outfit, say, a Corvette for optimal PvP slash PvE combat, what weapons go in which slots and what engineering? I just want to say this Bonus is an awesome question, question. Stone Cold, Steve Austin, or The Rock? Uh, I, all right. First, what, should we do the second part first? Or we should do the second part, part first, all for right, sure. Sec- second part first. Um, I just want to know what, what uh, Steve Austin is cooking. That's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock has definitely had more staying power. Yeah, as it's got to be the rock star. for me. It's got to be the rock. I think Steve rock. Austin has a podcast. Pretty sure I'm a few years <laughs> out really? of the wrestling scene. <laughs> Woo! So the guys who know that are gonna <laughs> gonna roast us. They're here. gonna be all over you. <laughs> yeah. I have I have been uh, I was I I never paid attention to wrestling, but I will watch any movie that The Rock is in. That guy's fantastic. Yeah, I call him Mr. Johnson out of respect. He is yeah. so funny. He's such a better actor than he lets on. For Absolutely. real. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Good guy. Now, Good guy. For, for Devoluter's actual question, the first thing we need to say is if you're outfitting a Corvette for PvP, you're probably doing it wrong. Oh. Not necessarily. Explain. Hold up. Hold up. It can be done. The Corvette is not entirely. I see lots of PvP Corvettes. Well, I, yeah, I, 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 I just want to say, me, no. uh, uh, tracks and data fly fly a lot of Corvette. I don't, I don't see my good buddy Dubs fly it too often. And Nurgle, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen what? you fly one. I don't even know. He one. flies his Corvette. My okay. Corvette lives in combat zones, and I usually she it looked eight, she looked eighteen. Uh, yeah, he dating even knows the name. He knows my Corvette. <laughs> okay, well, that's what I'm saying is we all have different Corvettes and we use a lot of different strategies and stuff. And, like, I'll start. My my Corvette right now is... Well, hold on, actually. Do, okay. Does anybody does anybody have intentionally a PvP build or do they feel like their build is PvP compatible? Mine purposely got tweaked so that I wouldn't get fucked up in PvP. It's not okay. specifically for PvP, but I when I'm flying it, I'm hoping I get pulled. Okay. Yeah, mine, okay, mine so is go ahead, capable. Then. Yeah, mine is capable yeah. but not specifically tuned. I think we're all going to land in the same place then. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I specifically changed mine just because of some PvP issues I had run into, so I, I changed things up. <laughs> but also, uh, but also, it was in uh, conflict zones. I got sick of the bitch glitter, the chaff, all the time. Mm. So I went all fixed weapons. And for a large ship, the Corvette's the only one that can turn fast enough to, you know, realistically compete with fixed weapons compared to a you know Type Ten or Anaconda or a Cutter. You just I, I can't see you realistically staying alive using just fixed yeah. weapons. So I I I went to fixed weapons and then I you know went with my you know rail guns and uh, the shield boost busters and super pen and everything else specifically just because I had gotten pulled a couple times and just had to flee or like one night got hit by some gankers and just had to run away. And now, I mean, I haven't been killed in my Corvette in a long time. So I so don't is it all rail right guns? Uh, three rail guns. Uh, you know, he wants I, to know what slots they're in. Cro- Run it down. I'd have, Huge, I'd have to pull it up large. specifically. Yes. Uh, by, by size. Uh, you just, just put okay. it in there. You know, I, the, that that shitty annoying little slot underneath the nose, it's the, large. the it's size large. three, yeah. yeah. Uh, that that's that's the biggest pain in the butt to deal with. But you know, I, it's I, I'm not in game right now, so I can't I can't look up the I can't look up the. Ex- <laughs> I'm gonna look specifics. you up on an Ara and I'll, go, I'll go solve ahead. this problem and then, for and then you. Crit- criticize the the shit out of it because I, I've I've had fun with it. You know, I mean, would we've uh, like. Some of I'm the not going to criticize anything. I'm the curious. The CGs I've had fun with, you know, because, you know, run into some actual players fighting the other side of the CG and have ch- been able to chase them away and stuff. Uh, but, you know, I, I've got a thermal vent in there. I've got a corrosive, it, not corrosive. Yeah, corrosive. You got to have that multi cannon with corrosive and, and just 
it, it, it's it's fun to do. But the fact that Steven Ludery asked for this hybrid build is you just got to take into account what, you know, for me, the biggest thing to protect a PVE build is having that extra module protection because that that's where you run into trouble against PVPers is they come in and they snipe, you know, your drop, yeah, either your FSD so you can't get away or your power mm-hmm. plant or something. So just getting some module protection in there, usually you can escape from just about anything if you just get some module protection in there. That's my yeah. suggestion. So it looks like Chig's Corvette, it has uh, two size four beam lasers, um, which oh, are. One of them's thermal. One of them, they're both efficient. One is thermal, one is oversized. Um, okay. Your three is an efficient pulse, la- pulse laser with scramble. And then you've got uh, two rail guns in the size two. Let's with just sturdy. touch the scramble just for one second. That's just yep. to, once again to F with PVPers. You start messing right. with their modules randomly. It makes them freak that's out. That's what that's about. Exactly. Yeah, it probably doesn't really do any real harm most of the time, yeah, but it makes people start to freak out. And it's a low energy draw weapon, so yeah, relative. And then we've we've got two rail guns with sturdy uh, and uh, super pen and feedback cascade. Um, sturdy's an interesting mod in a rail gun. Lowers heat, doesn't it? Hold on, I'm being attacked. Yes, by yeah, it lowers yes. heat uh, yep. and all that nonsense. Okay, so and that's raises, fun and it. I'm pretty sure it even further raises your uh, penetration, if I'm not it mistaken. It does. Yeah. From my, yeah. Uh, the it's armor been a I've been flying higher. that one for a while. Let and then look. we've yeah. got, oh man, this is weird. So you've got one more, a size one rail gun, again with sturdy and super pen, and then you've got an enforcer cannon with uh, overcharge. That's where my corrosive. corrosive is, yes. Yeah. So that's fun. So these are all fixed, by the way. The lasers, everything's fixed. <laughs> that's yep. fun, man. Everything. Oh, yeah. It's a okay. blast. It's a blast to fly. All right. Um, who else? So, multi cannons. One of you two. All multi cannons <laughs> and the two small hard points on the nose are shield busting rail guns. All overcharged. Oh, that's yeah, all overcharged. Uh, the large on the nose is uh, corrosive. The two mediums are. Uh, what do you call it? Thermal, so the incendiary rounds, and then the two huges mm-hmm. are auto loader, and they tend to just shred shit. So, do you do you have? Are they gimbaled? Yes, yeah, all gimbaled. And so, what do you do? You have trouble with chaff, or you just wait them out and out damage them I, between yeah, targets? I, I wait them out, and I attempt a fucking nose boop while they're chaffing. <laughs> ram. <laughs> Go for the ram. What about you, Data? Yeah, I've got. The two huge multi cannons with the overcharged auto loader. You can fire those things all day on the size size four auto loaders. That oh, weird okay. that weird size three on the bottom. I got a long range beam laser with a thermal vent on it. I got that instead of a heat sink. So I could yep. put all those all them shield boosters on the utility slots. And I got two multi cannons on the size one small slots on the nose. That's where I've got the corrosive and the emissive experimental effects. That emissive helps targets show up even if they're trying to run cool. Mm-hmm. And I also just wait out the chaff. All the all those are uh, gimbaled hard points, but I can fire my uh, two medium pack count missiles. I got on the on the right, left right. and right sides when the chat is going. Yeah. Those are I re- those are just those are fun. I've never looked much into like the effectiveness damage wise of missiles. I just like watching all the pack hounds fly around. <laughs> so in my experience, two sets of pack hounds with the uh, with the high capacity and the overload munitions is a, closely equivalent to huge two huge beam lasers. Uh, when it comes to shield stripping capabilities. Yeah, I need to look at that. What'd you say, overload? I've got, I probably have some waste on mine. I got drag drive on both. Well, well drag drive is good too. I mean, I, I just ran It's good, overload. but you don't need it yeah. on both. Right. Yeah. They don't stack. Right. So uh, my Corvette's been through some some 
kind of build attempts. I actually started using um, beam lasers on the top, on the size fours, and I went efficient thermal vent. And because um, I was sort of just wanting to have that that constant damage, right? And not to worry about um, ammo and stuff. Um, and in that case, I, I did have pack hounds in the size twos, which are high capacity. And one of them was overload and the other one was drag. The um, on, on the front, I think for a little while I had, I think I had a railgun, a small railgun with a, a feedback cascade. Um, but I it, I had so many fire groups at that point, I, I never really used it. And in the size three, I had put, a, I had something laying around. I had an advanced multi, uh, uh, sorry, an advanced plasma accelerator that was just not being used on any ship and I threw it in there. And and that was sort of the answer that I had to when somebody popped chaff, right? It was, well, now I can use my missiles and I can still fire this plasma accelerator. And yeah, I could put up some damage that way, but it was sort of irritating just how many different fire groups I had. I, I don't really dig that, having to rotate through them all the time. Um, so eventually, uh, well, actually, the other thing that was irritating about that build was how energy intensive it was. I mean, with the those two huge beam lasers, you really have to put so much pips into weapons and you pretty much sit still. You have to, you know, you, you don't have much left over for anything else. Uh, so I switched it around and I put the huge multi cannons on overcharged and one of them's incendiary and the other one has flow control just for good measure. And I switched the front. So they're actually both multi cannons, just like data's they um, the corrosive and emissive because um, I just I, 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 emissive probably does help probably does help getting a lock with the missiles sometimes um, so I figured it was the next best thing to do and then everything else even the size three I also put a pack hound in because <laughs> I thought I just want to reduce my triggers so basically now I have a multi cannon trigger and a pack hound trigger and if you pop chaff you're going to be hit with three sets of pack hounds. <laughs> Um, it has drag, and then the other two have overload, and yeah, they are very effective. So that's something. Um, did you go over in the combat thing, and I missed it about fire did, groups and and like uh, most of hmm. my ship builds, I specifically design them so that I don't have to change. Mm. I, you know, I've got I've got group one and group two, so I've got primary fire and secondary fire. If I have to change your fire groups too much, yeah, right. I I just yeah. I it I I think it just takes away from what you're doing. If you've got it, some specialty thing you're doing, you're going to lose efficiency in your ability to well uh, murder things. I, I I tend to agree. I I find it really irritating when I have to switch fire groups. So I try like crazy to get them all into two different triggers. Um, where I've allowed exceptions have been in cases where we're what we're switching to is the long range rail guns and specifically long range in that case because I really want to be using them from far away. So when I'm switching to canceling shield cell banks, you know that's fine. Um, my mamba is like that. Essentially, everything's on one fire group, but then. I think it's okay for the Mamba because I'm always coming in fast and then zipping far away again. And when I'm far away, I have plenty of time to rotate the fire group over and you know shoot at the cell banks with my railguns for a while as I'm coming back in. Um, and I think my my crate is the same way. Okay. Um, I have my sort of close range weapons. Actually, the crate is interesting um, because I have a fixed thermal vent beam laser with long range and the long range rail guns. So they're all good up to six kilometers. And then I have plasma accelerators in the other two uh, size three slots. So I sort of have close range mode and far range mode, uh, but the beam lasers in both fire groups. So the beam laser is always able to shoot drain heat. Um, it works with the rail guns because it's, it's just like them. It's good out to six K. And then when I come in close, I can hit them, drain some heat off with that and then blast with the plasma accelerators. It's, you know, Okay. Sort of okay. sort of alternating, but those are in the same fire group. So I'm really just switching whether the plasma accelerators or the rail guns are turned on, the beam laser's always there. So that makes it a lot less confusing. So it sounds like long range or short range is your primary. <laughs> That's right. the setup for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and the Mamba too, actually, because yeah, the other ones are it's it's plasma and frags, and then I switch to the two small um rail guns. 
Okay. Interesting. Not that that was the question that what, we were what, asked, what, but... <laughs> what do you, now, Dubs is like the resident combat specialist. What, what do you think on that? So, I mean, do you, are I'm you juggling fire of, groups? I'm in the middle of fighting an elite uh, gunship that just pulled my DBX while All I right, was that, that's not gathering my problem. Mats. I didn't ask for your life story. <laughs> what, what, are we, what, what is your... <laughs> well, you're not going to lose, right? Just to answer the question. Yeah, just answer the yeah. question. So what, what was the, uh, the what's, what's the gist of the question? I need to answer. Real Fire quick. groups. Do you try to the, get your the weapons fewer, to tie the to, Yeah, to tied to primary, secondary, and yeah. maybe juggle a, a second. Well, I'll, I'll juggle the second one, but three or more fire groups. That's exploration ships only. Ones with like utility stuff. Yeah, that's, that's like sure. a combat ship should have no more three maximum at absolute most. Yeah, primary, secondary, shift, and then your primary again. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm kicking right. this uh, gunship's ass, by the way, in my 65 light year DBX. I, I don't know. It sounded like Kick you were scared, ass. so I'm just going to ah, go in. Sorry. Yeah, it sounded Shot like you didn't even want to chat with us. You were so worried. <laughs> well, I wasn't I wasn't paying attention because I was, you know, in the of this fight. That's right. He was ignoring us. <laughs> to fight Look, that when, when nasty fights, NPC. Well, the elite... Some some of the elite ones aren't fucking around. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've, I've um, heard of that. <laughs> so, listen, guys. There was one more question that I think was actually aimed at the show, uh, and that is from Commander NL Hate. Is Data cool? Absolutely not. Chig, what? <laughs> Data who? <laughs> Nurgle. <laughs> sure, why not? Oh, that's cool. That's very nice of you. Um, I Wait, think data, data, data didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I think data is extremely important. Um, without data, all we have is hearsay. Yeah. No, data's <laughs> cool. He's a badass. Even though he's not answering right now. Most, most more than 50% of life is just showing up. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that is the name of the show tonight. <laughs> oh man! More than so just I, it down. Life is I did. Just I did showing up. That, That's I what did we did this success. week. You realize that, right? <laughs> we just showed up. Yeah, <laughs> we just showed you up. At least do that. You'll go far. <laughs> yeah, I actually just stayed home all week. So. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, um, that's that's all the show we had prepared, and I use that word prepared very, very, very loosely. Okay, hit hit chick chat. Okay, hold on. Wait, oh, I was on the wrong tab. Uh, we're doing it. We're doing what are we doing? This one. <clears throat> Is chick chat <laughs> oh, Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> it's chick chat. <laughs> Where the cheese at? <laughs> awesome. Great That's my shit. favorite one, Absolutely by the way. Absolutely amazing. Uh, Ty, we miss you. We know you're still listening. Don't yeah. Be it that way. I um, hope you're having a good Thanksgiving, man. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And that that's that's all I'm doing for Chick Chat is I, I want you guys to come and tell me what you're thankful for. Uh, just 2020's been a goddamn shit show, uh, you know, across the board. Uh the beauty is we all have this great space game to go fly in and we can do, you know, we, we can escape as much as we want. And, and that, that's what I do. So, I mean, what I'm thankful for this year, other than I'm still alive, I've got my family and everything else. I'm thankful that Elite Dangerous seems to be going in a great direction and we have plenty of shit to do, and people are complaining about mining and everything else, but man, just kick back. It's a game. We can have fun. Let's let's have a blast, and I am thankful for the whole Loose Screws network. We're having a blast in the Discord, and I appreciate each and every one of you, and if you haven't joined our community yet, please come. We, we have a blast. There's people sitting up in general right now. Let me make sure. Yes, there's people sitting up in general right now, chatting <laughs> and, and flying. And and I, I I 
we have a blast, guys. There's a reason we're sitting here talking about this is because we have fun playing this game, and none of us knew each other, you know, what, a year ago? None of us had never even no. yeah. I still spoken don't know to you. each other. Uh, you don't. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, honestly, I, I, we had never spoken to each other. Not a single person on this show tonight spoke to each other before, you know, a, a year ago, yeah, none of us existed. So mm-hmm. the one good thing for 2020 is I've made a, a great new group of friends, friends, and I'm having a blast playing a game, flying my spaceship, and hanging out with these goddamn people. But it's 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 a great year. So thank you all. I don't know. Shoot, uh, come tell me tell me what you're thankful for. I don't care if it's. If it's sappy, I, I'm fine with that because I just need happy talk. So that's all I've got. Well said. Thank you. Um, that's about all we've got. Uh, unless anybody wants to holler and oh does anybody God. have anything na- nasty to say about NL hate before we go? Yeah. Yeah, screw I do. that guy. Yeah, yeah son of a bitch. <laughs> He's <Yeah>. terrible. <laughs> Unload. Never seen the Princess Bride. <laughs> <laughs> is it still true? Yeah, wait, it's we need still to put true. that out there. That guy has All never right. seen the Princess Bride, everybody. That's um inconceivable. Neither neither have I. Shame him. What? Whoa, oh my God. whoa, whoa. What? Okay. I'm gonna have to end this podcast before there's a legitimate fight. That was yeah, so terrible. We're not going to die, everybody. Have your Thanksgiving. Canceled. It's done. It's over. <laughs> Dubs took away cheese for Thanksgiving. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to have to be more leftovers. How dare you even say such a thing? Because I'm I'm hurt that you have not seen The Princess Bride. Do you really not have a cheese? No, I've got a cheese. Of course I've got a cheese. Oh. But <laughs> He's just not going to say it because we didn't see the movie. <laughs> I'm anyway, N- NLH shown up at the very last moment. How are you doing? Are you are you okay? You still are you still alive? You, are you have you eaten a bird or something? Uh no, no, you know, real life stuff. I had to get my roommates yeah. to work. Hey, no worries, man. Um we talked about a lot of stuff and it was uh good or bad. I don't know. It was good all again. Real quick. Quick. Judge. <laughs> Let the listeners listen. God, that was we'll genius. Let the listeners listen. All right, Chig, cheese us out. All right. Um um. Oh, this week, uh, extra sharp cheddar cheese because cheese is good. Now, wait. Let me just say, haven't you used cheddar, cheddar before? No, I've used. I told you, and I used Monterey Jack before, and then I cheated and went Pepper Jack last week. So now uh, right. we're, we're starting to retread. I'm gonna have a new cheese. I'm gonna have a lot of new cheeses because remember, I've got this whole uh, Advent calendar that's a cheese every day in December <laughs> up until Christmas. But right. It's killing me because it's in my fridge and I want to eat it, but I can't because it's not the 1st of December yet. So let's ignore my pain for the moment. And extra sharp cheddar cheese. Now, a lot of people wonder, you know, cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar cheese, extra sharp cheddar cheese, blah, blah, blah. The biggest difference between the cheddar cheeses is how long they're aged. The longer they're aged, the more moisture comes out of them and they become sharper with age. You know, I, I want to... Sh- cheddar so sharp I can shave with it. That's my dream Amen. in life. <laughs> um, but it's a stronger, stronger flavor. A stronger yeah, flavor you, you get a very stronger flavor. <clears throat> yeah. And the reason I went with extra sharp cheddar cheese for um, that for tonight is when I was a kid, you know, it's like I only got the sharp cheddar cheese at Thanksgiving, you know, the meat and cheese tray at, at Thanksgiving. <laughs> and it's like, and I had, an, I had an uncle tell me that, that, no, you can only get sharp cheddar cheese on the holidays. That's why we have it every Thanksgiving. And I believed that till I was like, you know, in my teens, I thought that that was true. So <laughs> it's a holiday I, cheese. I, I, yeah, it was a holiday cheese, and it was my favorite because I only got it on the holidays. Then I realized I can walk into any grocery store and buy it when I got older, and I'm like, that son of a bitch and I haven't spoken to him since so the cheese is extra sharp cheddar cheese stay cheesy everybody thanks a lot um, thanks to Commander Chig, Commander Dubs 
Commander, Lieutenant Commander Data, Commander Nurgle, Commander NL Hate right there at the very end. Uh, I'm Commander Jan Trax. This is Loose Screws, the loosest and screwiest podcast in the soul system saying have a happy Thanksgiving. We're thankful for all of you and please stay safe. Uh, keep it loose and screwy. That's going to do it. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> gobble. Gobble, gobble. gobble. <laughs> <laughs>